Hello plan people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and today's video is sponsored by PV Mart and connected to the land podcast. If you're looking for some awesome resources on homesteading, gardening, and just all things DIY in general, then it is the blog site for you and obviously the podcast for you. So be sure to go check that out. I will leave a link for that down below. Let's jump into exactly how we feed pollinators start to finish, how to attract more pollinators to our yard, what is defined as a pollinator, what are their purposes, all of that fun stuff. So the first big question is, what's the purpose of a pollinator? We always hear about how pollinators help to feed the world and without them we will starve. So why is that? And there's a few reasons for that. Not only does the pollination process produce fruits and vegetables that we then consume, the pollination process actually helps aid in diversity and a diverse genetic code. This diverse genetic code or just diversity in general within the seed profile that comes out of that fruit or vegetable is incredibly valuable to making offspring or future plants that can withstand a wide range of different scenarios in the environment. Some of those scenarios could include extreme colds, extreme heats, drought resistance, resistance to flooding, certain pests, I mean the list goes on and on. So when we have a diverse number of pollen, coming in or genetic code coming into our flower and producing fruit, which then has seeds that have that genetic code in it, we end up with more powerful plant population, which I mean, eventually maybe plants will just take over the world. If we keep on letting these mad scientist type pollinators run rogue all over the place. So that is what it means when people talk about the importance of pollinators. It's not so much their ability to make the food, but it's actually their ability to carry genetic code from a pretty far distance when we're talking about some of the pollinators. I think another really common misconception is that pollinators are simply hummingbirds, butterflies, and bumblebees. That isn't the case. There actually are a huge wide range of different types of pollinators ranging from ants, beetles, moths, bats, flies, wasps, and even just the wind. My top three, which unfortunately we'll never see in Canada, but I did get a bit of a chuckle out of, are the ruffled lemur, the blue-tailed gecko, and the honey possum. Anyways, I thought those were hilarious that those are pollinators. And then obviously just natural engagement with the environment will cause pollination to an extent. So the first question that a lot of gardeners have, how do I feed pollinators in the early spring when the poor bumblebees are wandering around without food and none of the flowers have yet bloomed? And the simple answer to that is to actually to plant your seeds earlier in the season and then furthermore plant in waves. So when I say plant earlier in the season, I mean starting your seeds a month or two before you naturally would, or you can purchase them from the actual greenhouse with blooms already attached for those early months. Now, with that being said, as the summer goes on, you get later into your summer, you're going to notice that the life cycle for that plant begins to close down and you may end up with some ratty looking plants towards the end of the summer. That's where the statement waves comes in. So you would plant three separate waves or two separate waves, depending on how long your growing season is or what zone you're in and you would actually substitute out the earlier plants as they begin to close out their life cycle with the newer plants from the second or third wave and then you would just go through that process until the year ends and what this will do is it will not only keep your yard looking very very pretty and full of blooms beginning to end it also is going to feed those pollinators beginning to end as well and add to that genetic diversity we're looking for. So we have an understanding of what pollinators are and what purpose or role they have in the environment around us. We also know how to feed those pollinators start to finish, but how do we ensure more pollinators in our yard, especially if we have limited space 
or if we don't have an absolute meadow of flowers. And the easy answer to this is actually colors. Because pollinators are always looking for colorful flowers, they are also going to respond to colorful decor in our yard. The specific colors that pollinators are looking for are blue, yellow, red, purple, and white. And more specifically than that, they're looking for clusters of those colors. So not only do pollinators enjoy uh, flowers, they enjoy flowers in clusters because then they don't have to work as hard to get into different pollen sources and different nectar sources. So if you're able to cluster, say, painted rocks in an area altogether, that's going to bring those pollinators into the yard, which will then encourage them to actually interact with the plants, which may be beneficial, especially if you have more of a vegetable garden, such as tomatoes, where you don't have an enormous amount of color to bring those pollinators in in the first place this will be able to help you step up your game the other way to increase the number of pollinators in your yard is actually through just introducing pollinators and now this may sound intimidating but trust me it doesn't have to be so while there is honeybee hives you can get and you can put in your backyard it is encouraged that you do take some courses on how to keep honeybees because there is a little bit of a knack and it is a hobby unto itself. But there is an easier, less expensive, and actually less painful way of introducing pollinators and that is through leaf cutter bees. So leaf cutter bees are very, very friendly. They are child safe and pet safe, but not only that, they are pollinators and they will help pollinate your yard. The really nice part about these bees in your yard is that they usually don't wake up until the later stages of summer when we're in those 25 plus degrees celsius days so because they like those warmer temperatures we don't have to worry too too much about keeping a continuous flow of flowers they're up and awake and mobile when the flowers are up awake and mobile as well I hope you guys have found this helpful. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let me know in the comments down below what fact you didn't know about pollinators or what trick you didn't know about pollinators. I think the most important takeaway from the video as a whole isn't that you need a specific flower or you need to have a certain volume of flower. That's not always the case. A pollinator is going to go with whatever flower you give them. So you don't have to specifically do milkweed, for example. A pollinator will engage with alyssum, lobelia, just your regular old flowers, tomato plants, whatever the case is. The thing or the goal that you're aiming for is just to bring the pollinators into the yard. And that's where different colors can help or just actually introducing the pollinators all on its own. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.